So Nike rallies after Elliot Hill returns as CEO. This is a former Nike executive. This is kind of like the homegrown hometown hero kid returning back, right? The prodigal son. This dude has been in Nike since he was an intern, like in 1992. He rose ranks within the company. Um, and now he's back as CEO and the stock is responding positively, okay? They have not met expectations on their most recent earnings calls. The stock's down 24% this year. There's concerns with competition. There's concerns with growth. So is Elliot Hill the right guy to get Nike back on track? Is it a good buying opportunity at this point in time? Welcome back to the channel, guys. Let's jump right into it. I mean, this is like, like LeBron coming back to Cleveland, right? We've seen this, right? This is like Iger coming back to Disney. However, it's not always good news, right? Disney remains in a bearish trend. It's trading heavy. It hasn't been able to recover and participate in the bull market, okay? If we look at Nike's EPS and sales numbers over here. They're all over the place. They're down to, you know, two years. They're down year over year. Same with uh, sales, down from 12.7 billion two years ago to 11.6 billion expected here this month so the growth trends are in the opposite direction that's part of the reason it's down 24 percent this year right on some more fundamentals they have a dividend yield of 1.83 percent maybe they might want to get rid of that to uh, reinvest some more of that cash flow into growth and competition the P the forward pe is 26 i think they would come actually a bit lower right it's not a tech stock it's not growing it's one of these old companies so i'm not sure look next year's revenue projected downwards even 2026 won't surpass 2024 or 2023 that's not good to see valuation again i think this could come down profitability is okay these these numbers are good right here market cap you know debt cash that's a scratch so that's okay they're a dividend grower that's good they've got institutional support but i'm not sure how many people um you know how much value there is to be found here just yet look at the growth right this is the main problem with nike Revenue growth year over year is 0.2%. So they're like 90, 85% below the sector. They're supposed to be a leader, right? NVIDIA is not 85% below the sector. Netflix is not 85% below the sector, right? So that's not leader numbers. Even their own average, 95%, they're, they're even underperforming themselves more than they are the sector, right? And of course, that's because they were a leader. So this number was higher than a sector. It doesn't get any better. Revenue growth forward, so the projected rate, 0.15%. It's even smaller and the sector medium is even larger. That is not good, right? Underperforming yourself even larger. We've seen other companies come and compete, right? I've talked about Adidas on this channel before in my best international stock videos. This company right here is a $15 billion market cap on on. You might've heard of them. They're a, a competing shoe company. So this thing, that thing could almost 10 X, um, a lot more room to grow to catch up to Nike. And yes, it has a higher forward PE because yes, it's growing much faster, right? And that stock has been performing. Look at these numbers, right? Revenue growth forward 37%. It looks like Nvidia, right? That that's just absolutely ridiculous. And in one year, it's up sixty six percent. I'm not sure we can see Adidas here on on this because it is international. Um, Adidas, yeah. So this is kind of the DR. So again, um, this is a bigger forty five, but still can triple to get to the size of Nike, right? And this is also growing faster than Nike. So there's competition, and uh, there's other stocks that look better in the space. For me, this was a, a nice point for a rebound, um, and we knew that in several ways, right? First of all, we have an ABC completion, right? We have kind of this AB a, B move, right? Where we form this bear flag right here. The bear flag broke down. You take the length of the flagpole, you measure it out, and those are your targets. That's exactly where we reached. When we reached there, we had green shade oversold conditions. We had this outside bar, shade flip. So that's a buying signal, but this is counter trend with a red tag. So I wouldn't I wouldn't take that um, exactly, but it's still working out, right? Nice bull flag. And you're gonna gap up here today. Nike's gapping up about 6% and it's trying to close above the short term moving average. That's gonna be a big close. So then you'll be finally making your first higher low and higher high if you can close that. And I think it can rally for a few weeks but I still wouldn't be buying this stock, okay? We also had a Fibonacci extension of the big move like so, okay? So Fibonacci expansion of the first big down move, 113 um, extension, which is the first area where you seek resistance or potential resistance, okay? Now, how high can we go here? Well, if we take this ABCD 
we measure a Fibonacci retracement. We're coming up on the 382, so the first kind of major Fib level. We also have structure here, right? You can see right here we had a bounce up and a bounce up. So this kind of 87 to 89 is going to be the first kind of major resistance where we might stall. If you're long from down here, I might consider taking profits there, right? You can also consider this corrective trend line like so. It's going to be in the same area. Let me just clear this up to make that a little more clear. This area like so. And I believe that um, is it for that. I want to zoom out because it looks like we're forming this longer term base, right? You want to be in a stock when it's moving averages are in order, right? Short term, medium term, long term, and it's surfing the short and medium term, right? You have buying opportunities every time you retest them. You're tagging green and the Jupiter pendulum and momentum is supporting you. But once you start breaking through that, you form these longer term bases, right? This was a three year base for Nike back in November, 2015, where it kind of quadruple bottomed their head and shoulders on the long term moving average. But even that three year base, didn't get below the long-term moving average. Here we shot below it, we rejected resistance, and we got below it making lower lows. This is a much uglier situation. So I think at the very least, you can expect three years. Um, this began in 21, so it's been three years, literally, September 24. So this began in 15, and we broke the highs in 18, so three years as well. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be longer than three years because we're not breaking the highs in October, which is next month, that's not going to happen, right? And so either way, it's forming this long term base. There's no reason to rush it, right? What you need is Nike to break back above the moving averages, right? Break through this trend line resistance. And more importantly, get a green tag on a lower time frame, reclaim its green tag, right? The growth needs to be there. Once it can do some of those things, you have more confirmations to get involved. So yeah, you might miss 10, to 15% gains, but you're going to avoid sitting in a stock that might go sideways for another year or so. Whereas when you break through, get confirmation, green tag, volume, momentum, the first consolidation pivot or shade flip, then you have an entry. You're going to make, you know, probably 100% as it heads to all time highs, um, but you're just timing it much better. There's no reason to rush it because there's no growth story yet for Nike. The fundamentals don't support it. It's in a bearish trend. So yes, this is a shade flip at work. It's in profits. It's a nice counter trend bounce. But I think we're coming up on, on the resistance levels and I wouldn't be too sure. So that's the 382. Let's draw the fit from the whole move. It's from high to low. And we also have the two the uh, yeah, the 236. So the first fib level right there. It's the same area. So right here, I'd be looking for potential uh, resistance and we'll see what happens. It's gonna be very interesting once we get there. Can we break through with momentum or will we reject it, right? Another thing we can look for here is a potential head and shoulders where we have left shoulder, okay? We have the head that's already been formed here or it's been formed. Maybe the head itself will be a double bottom. And then again, we have to break through this channel, tag green and then pull back and make that right shoulder, in which point we draw fifth from the head to the high. We'd expect a pullback to kind of the 618 Fibonacci, right? To form that right shoulder, oops. Okay, so that would be a nice chart pattern and we can look for that on the weekly. There's just a lot of time. There's no need to rush Nike. Um, things can keep going down, right? Look at Walgreens. Who would have, you know, people thought it was a good buy here. Here, you know, Nike could be, Nike's here. Like, just got below the, the long term, rejected it. Nike's here, right? And yes, it could bounce, but no need to rush it. People thought Walgreens was a good buy here and here and here and here and here. It's at $9. It's all time high is 100, right? So, you know, you never want to chase something like that. When, when growth is out of the picture, investors have no reason to buy something, right? So again, I think there's better opportunities in the space. Um, and so, yeah, I think there's, they're both better opportunities in that space. And the fundamental doesn't support it. But hey, um, this is kind of the trading plan or the setup. This is what I would be looking for in terms of Nike stock. If it presents itself, then you have a good entry, right? Just because something seems like a value stock doesn't mean you have to rush into it, right? Um, if you can time value with the, the right timing or proper confirmation, uh, you're going to do a lot better overall in the long term. And you're not going to waste your money just sitting idly by when it could be put to better use, when it could be more productive somewhere else. Okay, even when you break through, you always have that first pullback by an opportunity, right? So don't be scared, right? Even when you break through, you have that first pullback by an opportunity. Always, right? You break through, pull back, right? And so you don't, you don't need to rush. You don't need to try to time the exact bottom. 
All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Just a quick one. Um, thought that was interesting in the news, and um, that's the way I'm seeing it. I don't see, I just, both in terms of, oh, is it cheap? Is it is it super cheap? So like, just let me DCA into this, like a value play, like a, like an investor. I don't, I wouldn't have this on my radar. I think I, I'd rather buy Walgreens at nine, um, even though it's it's in more danger, but it's, uh, it's a more attractive value. Um, and then also in terms of trading and TA and like, is there a trade setup? Like in none of those situations do I see um, what I have Nike on my radar. So it's just not on my radar at all, right? I mean, the Shea Flip, okay, that's understandable if you took it. And this is where I'd be looking for potential take profits, right? And so we'll see what happens once we get there. Much love. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next. Peace. Enjoy your weekend.